All right, let me show you what some macros are like in, in Word to simplify work. And then let's see if we can record some macros to get something done there. Okay, so say I had a new job for you. We're going to do two plumbers, right? So it'll be like two plumbers. Plumbing. All right. And what are we going to have? We're going to have a Word doc, right? And may as well call it something plumbing, you know, two dash plumbing, whatever it is. Uh, just some way of keeping track because there could be more than one plumbing job depending on the need. And then, of course, we're going to have the Excel file. That's also going to be like two dash plumbing. Okay. And let me just open both of them, highlight them and open them, or just open them independently, whatever. May as well. <clears throat> Okay, so what am I going to do now? I'm going to go get content, obviously, and I'm going to show you how efficient the uh, macros are so that we can get into that. So I'm going to look up uh, Denver Plumbers, and I'm going to come down to something that's a real company, and that would be like Brothers Plumbing. Okay, Now, really, I should open a few, obviously, and I should get some content from here and there, just whatever makes sense, different topics from each different place. But I'm just going to do this now. Uh, just because so I'm just gonna go with this because it's just really really fast to go through here but here are the mechanics obviously right and of course the only reason I say go through more sites is to get more diversity you don't want everything to rely on just one guy right you don't want all of your text based on one guy you want to get content from here and there that you can work with to manipulate to create something new all right so here we go that's a topic I'm gonna to go ahead and uh, open up my word doc I'm gonna paste it in as text Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and make a, I don't want to just put um, a new line break here, really. I definitely want a break between the uh, text and the line break. Um, and then I can put something new. By the way, don't let it do that, that automatic line break. Undo that, undo the borderline, right? That's what I hit this thing for, to undo the borderline. Okay, just to say, leave it alone. Let me do my thing. Okay. So I'm gonna get another page, and I'm just gonna show you how fast this can be. So watch this. I'm gonna open some of these topics, right? Okay, let's just go get some topics, okay? From the top down, you know, I get the header and everything, which we'll see, okay? And we'll get rid of wording like click here when we don't actually have any reason for click here, okay? So that that's easy enough, but again, yeah, it's just cleaning it up as you do as you do your thing. Undo. Okay. Because you don't know what we're supposed to have click here for. Let our guys figure that out. Okay. Let's take something else. Okay. Control C. Stick it in. Oh, whoops. Again, I pasted it the wrong way. I'm gonna undo. Right click. Text only. Got it. Okay. Just take it down, stop and you know, undo. Another way to do it is just copy a line from above, control C, and then just you know, paste it down below, right? Okay, and then let's take like one last page, right? Okay, I'll just show you what's going on. Okay, so faucets, right? Oh, again, so easy to make that mistake. Okay, paste as text. All right, we're gonna save it. Now, here's the thing. I've got three macro buttons I created. I'm going to show you how to do this as well because it's useful. One of them I named Line Breaks to Excel tab. So it starts off by saying normal because it's in the normal group of new macros. So it's normal dot new macros dot. I didn't choose that. The system chose it for me. So fine. Uh, I just had to come up with a name for it that I can remember. So I called it Line Breaks to Excel tabs. Notice how there are no spaces in there. But I do have the ability to use capital letters, right? So I can make it readable that way, okay? So now, what do you think happens if I hit it? It's going to convert all the line breaks to Excel tabs, except what do you think I did first? When I recorded that macro, I programmed it so it would check for double line breaks and convert them to single line breaks. And I had it do that like two or three times, okay? And then to wrap it up, of course, it converts line breaks to Excel tabs, right? So watch, wow, okay, there you go, the whole thing. All the pages just got moved in one quick and easy motion, 
By the way, I'm going to get rid of one of these. I don't see why they both need to be here. But again, it doesn't really matter. It, it's just you'll do your cleanup um, according to what you think best. Okay. Um, all right. Now, having said that, if there is anything at the end, go ahead and get rid of it. You know, and uh, you can save. Now, it has the Excel tab. So guess just how close I am right now. I can copy it. Go to Excel. I'm going to right click and I can paste this text. Well, you know, match destination format, which is text. <laughs> and sure enough, look at how nicely lined up that is with the page breaks and everything, right? So that's pretty cool. It's all right here. Okay. Now what? Um, let's say, let's say I got that far and that's my original, whatever, just so I can make sure to line everything up against one thing right? You don't really need to line up against your original. You need to line up against your first output, whatever it is you do. So if you go through here and update the uh, grammar or something like that, or do a Grammarly check or whatever, just to get it right before you put it through Spin Rewriter, fine. But there you go. That's my next macro, right? Now I got to put it through Spin Rewriter. So I want to convert these Excel tabs into this little thing we did, the space, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, space, right? That's what that macro does. It's Excel tabs to SRW format, spin rewriter format. So watch this. When I hit that, and this one actually I made a mistake. I should highlight the text first. So I'm gonna I'm gonna end that. I'm just gonna highlight it all. Okay, there we go. When I recorded it, apparently I highlighted it all. <laughs> so there you go. Okay, now guess what? It's already see it. See all of the uh, parentheses here and there? Okay. Now I'm going to run it through my spin rewriter program. And it's going to give me variations. I'm going to paste in the variations and check them out. What do you think I'm going to do with each variation anyway? When I'm done with it, I'm going to convert it back from spin rewriter format to, whoops, this one, spin rewriter format to Excel tabs to paste it into the next row. So watch this. Okay. There you go. It's all back. I just checked the end. And then that's really all I had to do. Let me copy it. Come back here. Make sure I'm all the way at the beginning, right? Sometimes you make this mistake. You paste something here and then it's all off. But then you realize you paste it into column V. <laughs> so yeah, come all the way back to column A and paste as text. And make sure all your line breaks are, are lining up for sure, right? That's a dead giveaway. You know, and then just, you know, whatever you see, right, that just gives it away. And especially the end, right? If the ends line up, you're probably perfect, <laughs> especially if your uh, page breaks line up. So there you go. You know, that's most likely all you had to do to create a bunch of variations in here. And the only thing you're doing in the meantime, obviously, is uh, the spin rewriter process and Grammarly and some manual editing. And then, you know, change all those company names into um, something general. Change all the phone numbers into something general. And I'll show you something very, very soon. What I want to show you right now, though, is how to make those macros in case you don't know. Okay? So let's take this thing right back to the beginning. Okay? And I don't know if I can do it this way totally, but it looks like I can. That's cool, too. Yeah. Take a look at that. That's the beginning, right? This is where we would start to record our macros. So watch this. This is just nice because, you know, it's kind of, you know, maybe it's a little nerve wracking at first to record the macro, but then after that, you're happy you have it because then it works. Okay. And if you get it wrong, just delete it and re record. It's no issue. There's no time dependency. It's just going to record your motion. So watch this. I've got in mind what I want to do with this thing. I want to convert double line breaks to single line breaks. And then line breaks to uh, pipes. So watch this. Let me see. I think it would be under view. Yeah. When you hit view, one thing you can see are macros. And you can see your macros by clicking on the top one. It gives you a list of your macros and where they basically are. All active templates and documents, right? There are other choices. But what we really want is this all active templates and documents, right? And I even put in descriptions for each. That's up to you. You don't need to, but I just chose to. Okay, so I'm going to, if I want to record a new one though, 
I just, uh, let me see, where do I go? Oh yeah, I hit the down arrow. So instead of viewing, I'm gonna record, okay? So I'm starting right where I wanna be. I did not highlight anything or anything. I've just got it right the way I want it, okay? Doesn't matter what the layout is. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hit it, and then I'm gonna record. It's gonna say, what's the name of your macro gonna be? Guess what you're gonna call it? Something like line breaks to Excel tabs. And I'll put a number two, you know, because I already have one that says line breaks to Excel tabs. Do you wanna make it a button or a keyboard shortcut? Well, it's up to you. I prefer a button. I can physically see the order of my buttons and I can work with them that way. But if you prefer keyboard shortcuts, do it that way. You could make both, you know. Okay, I'm gonna make it a button. I'm going to store it right here, all documents, right, which is fine. That's it. I don't just want it in this one document only. I want it for available for every document, okay? It's not a private macro. This is meant to be used on other documents. And I'm going to give it a description, you know, line breaks to Excel tabs, right? Okay. Now, see the little record? Um, it looks like a cassette disc next to the mouse, right? So it is recording. So whatever I do, it's just simply going to record this motion. So here's what I'm going to do. First, I made sure I'm in the file. I clicked in here somewhere. I can see my cursor blinking. That's the first thing it recorded, right? And that's perfectly fine. I didn't change any text. I didn't highlight anything. I just clicked in the file. Then I'm going to do a control H. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to do an upper caret P, right? Upper caret P. Replace it with a regular, get rid of the one that, whatever was there, just get rid of it. Replace it with an upper caret P. Now, it did not record what I deleted in these boxes because there's no reason. It simply recorded what I put into the boxes. So, I'm going to replace all. Yes. I'm going to replace all again. And I'll replace all one more time. Maybe even one more time. It will not hurt. It will not slow it down or anything. Not markedly, not enough to notice, but it will be accurate. So I'm still recording, of course. So now my next step is to change line breaks to Excel tabs, which of course means <laughs> I got to get an Excel tab. <laughs> so I'm just going to open Excel. This is separate from the macro. The macro is not going to open Excel. Okay. So I'm working outside of it right now. I'm going to open text. I got to put like an A here, a B there, or anything. Copy those two so I can paste it into like my notepad. Okay. That way I can just copy the tab space from the inside, right? Come back to my Word document, click in there, right click and paste it. There you go. Replace all. There you go. Now, do I need to replace all again? No, I don't. Okay, I'm good to go. I can close this thing. All right, so after you've recorded it, you want to make it appear in your list up here. Remember, you obviously don't have these three because I created them. And if you click on that, that's not very helpful. <laughs> so the question is, how do you get it to show up? I'll show you. Go in the gray bar up here, the open area where it's open up here. Right click. That way you can hit uh, let's see, like customize quick access toolbar. Okay. Kind of shows you all this stuff up and down here anyway, but quick access toolbar. Okay. That's actually this stuff up here. So I'm going to choose a macro. It's showing me everything in my computer grouped into groups and groups and groups and groups and groups. I'm going to go to macros. Okay. I'm going to select the one it made for me which is this one, right? It, when I hover over it, it gives me the full name, so I know that's the right one. And I'm going to add it, so it actually will show up in this list. Add. Now, it's not showing up right away because I haven't hit OK, but before that, see the icon? I want my icon to make sense to me because you're going to put more than one up here, and you want to remember which one's which, right? You could hover over them, but you may as well, if you want, hit Modify and just choose something that makes sense to you. Like I chose this, I think, okay? You can hit okay, right? That way you can hit okay, and guess what? There it is, it's right there. If I didn't have these other ones, 
that would be the first one in the list. If I wanted to take other ones out, I can right click, customize quick access toolbar, select one I want to take out, and remove it. Boom. And it'll just go back into the macros area because it's a macro, right? And yeah, it took off my cool formatting and everything. So I would have to add my cool formatting back in. Now, if I get this in the wrong order, right? And I'm thinking, what the heck? Well, here's what I can do. I can start highlighting these and removing them. Remove, remove, you know, remove, right? Get rid of whatever I do or don't want, okay? Um, I don't know if I can delete it from here, maybe not. But now I can add them in the order I do want, okay? So I can say this one first, then this one next, then this one last. And on my first one, I'm going to modify it, you know, to give it the icon I want. And then on my next one, I'm going to modify it to give it the icon I want, you know, just something I think works, right? And I, what I have up here, ah, this, no, no, that's not the one. I just had this. I think it's that, something like that. Um, and then the last one, right? That's where I had, you know, just sort of said recycle, come back to the beginning. Okay. And that's it. So I'm going to hit okay. Sure enough, there it is. One, two, three, right? And so you can just do it. Now, if you get an error when you do this, it probably means no, of, no text is selected. So just simply, whoops, get rid of that, highlight it all, right? Now text is selected. <laughs> so when you run it, there, it's done, piece of cake, okay? And then when you're all done doing all your stuff, remember to check the end. It always adds more than it should. You could probably try to record deleting it off the end, uh, but you might delete some words. <laughs> so just be careful what you choose to delete <laughs> man or automatically. And then finally, if I flip it back, it's back to Excel tabs, right? So all my cases are covered for everything. Now I have these. Every time I shut this down, I can save it. Okay. I don't need to keep anything else. Okay. I can delete that and I can close this. Okay, and I can close all this. Okay, every time I go to use it, it's going to be there for me, those three tools. And if I forget what they are, I'll just read them off, you know, because when you hover, it tells you, right? Line breaks to Excel tabs. That makes sense, right? And then Excel tabs to SRW format for the spin rewriter. And then SRW to Excel tabs. Okay, now you get what's going on. So you can create these macros to do anything you find you're doing repetitively. In the meantime, there you have it. That's how you do it. And so when you convert it back, make sure to convert the whole thing. Space, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, space. In other words, be exact. If that's what you convert to, then that's what you convert from. Okay, there you have it. That's how you do this and be able to run this thing efficiently. Uh, and get a lot of useful content out of there. And yeah, um, things like since 1880, uh, just replace it for stuff like for years because we don't want to be too descript. Although since 1980, who cares? It has nothing to do with the cell. But Brothers Plumbing, remember, you're going to want to replace that. Control C, Control H, Control V, right? And make sure you don't have anything else in the way. Okay. With company name, right? Replace all. Okay. That's eight things we don't have to worry about later. Phone numbers and everything, right? Mm -hmm. Call, you know, so here you go, right? Any phone number, any phone number is going to be same thing now. Um, and call it phone number. Why are we always using things that are slightly off? Because we're trying to make sure to keep our stuff separate from the actual text words. It might say, pick up a phone and call. And then if we say phone again, well, if we go to replace that later, it won't be unique enough. So that's why we have these capital letter, push out, push it out, you know, kind of crazy. Because our guys need to convert this stuff later. 
Here's another one. Let me go ahead and start doing this for you. Something that looks like an address line one, like I said, you can just get rid of it. Don't say stop into our store, okay? There won't be any store, okay? So you can delete that, right? Mm -hmm. We serve Colorado 80241. Let's say that's Denver, okay? So then what can we do for city? Do it like this. Denver, control C, becomes, and we're going to call it city B, right? Because there is no way there's a city B in print. Replace all. Okay. And what are we going to call um, state? Well, a long name like Colorado, and we can call it LS for long state. Okay. Um, LS. And you can really kind of call it what you want. Just think that there's a long state name and a short state name. So decide how you want to go about that. You could go state B, but then you might also think long state B, short state B. So as long as we know what you mean, like L state B or S state B, long or short, or, you know, state abbreviation B, although that's kind of weird. <laughs> long and, and short is easier. Okay, so I'm just going to go L state replace all got it and then uh, zip is just zip right control C probably it's not being used but if you want to be sure just make it zip B okay think of it as pig Latin <laughs> all right so yeah you're just getting rid of anything that feels like their company what else could you have you so you could have this com name right a l o for address line one if you wind up using it um, and then there's uh, LS, right, or SS, okay, and a city B, LS or SS, and zip B, then there's email B, there's SMS B for text us here, email us here, again, just make sure it's unique, something that should not be appearing in the print in any normal way, stuff like uh, time 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. Um, we're not going to worry about that too much because that can be adjusted at any time. Who really cares? People are going to call the phone. They're not going to read all the way down through the paragraphs to figure that out. We'll have times actually listed somehow, but it is supposed to be seven days a week and for emergencies. So not even from seven to uh, 10. Okay. It should be just, you know, 24 seven is open 24 7 right seven days a week for your convenience around the clock and don't say with no extra charges just around the clock because <laughs> that's day and night okay yep all of the guys in the system are going to be um 24 7 and that's true actually so that's fine um and again just deal with address line ones get rid of it no one's going to be visiting these companies. Remember, this is a dispatch center. These are not real brick and mortar businesses. But when people call in to here, these guys are going to reassign those calls to local people. So if a call comes in at 2 a.m., this company will assign it to somebody in their city who is open at 2 a.m. That's why you can say 24-7. But it's also why we don't have a particular address because it could be one or another guy is going to be sent out there to handle it. Um, so there you go. Yeah, the documentation on the site explains is a disclaimer. We are a call center. We don't actually handle the, the jobs ourselves. We simply take your information and forward somebody to you. And then there's a prices list that explain the prices. So it's all just made available. Okay, there you go. I think you have what you need to have uh, to get this job done. So give it a crack and um, make your macros set yourself up. And see what you can do and let me know.